facial liposuction, kybella, generally are not great things to do in the face. Facial liposuction doesn't really do anything good because the face itself is kind of skin out over here on top and then right underneath you got a little tiny thin fat layer and then you got some smas, some muscles, some fat, and some bone. Facial liposuction goes with a cannula that let's say it's this big and then goes into the facial fat which is maybe two cell layers of fat that's that big and it removes it. So it's very harsh because it can remove all the fat very quickly in a small area and it causes irregularities. There is rarely any benefit to facial liposuction. Very, very rare that there would be a benefit. So most of the time if somebody says facial liposuction, they're talking about the jawline and neck. That's cool, that's fine. In the face, we've really learned over the past, I'd say 10 years, how valuable the fat is in the face. And even if somebody's overweight, you don't go try to shrink their face in with, you know, that has like five compartments of fat by just liposuctioning one of the superficial layers. It doesn't make any sense. So you can get nerve damage from it, you can get irregularities, you can get permanent scarring, you can get indentations. There's a lot of issues that can come from facial liposuction and very few benefits. So if something gives you this risk and this much maybe benefit, then you generally shouldn't be doing it. So facial liposuction's a very bad idea in most cases. There are some situations where somebody would say they have an irregularity from fat injection and somebody can try to suck it out, that's fine. It's just like trying to get rid of silicone by liposuction. It's also not a great idea. So I advise mostly don't liposuction your face. You can only end up with irregularities and you're not gonna get much benefit. I've never seen a photo of somebody before and after that like, I'm like, oh my God, great, nice facial liposuction. It, it doesn't exist. It's not really out there. You're not gonna find a good before and after. This is different. You can liposuction here and it's great. The other thing I've seen be very problematic is Kybella. Kybella is deoxycholic acid. It's been around for many, many years. It's not a new thing, but it's been marketed as a new thing. The FDA indication for Kybella is for right under here. So the reason it's not indicated for the face is not because the FDA just missed something. It's because it can be very, very harmful in the face. Again, there is no fat removal technique for those layers that's really good because you shouldn't be removing most of those layers. So when people inject Kybella into the face, it can cause nerve damage. It can cause indentations. It can cause synkinesis because it can damage the nerves and the muscle and then the nerves kind of grow back in in a weird way so they don't move properly anymore. So I would say almost never inject Kybella into the face. Again, there are situations where let's say you do a facelift and you have a little bump left over and it's the buccal fat pad that came superficial or something like that. Yes, you can do it. But for a regular cosmetic procedure, it's not a good idea. So I'd be very, very cautious with that. And I've heard very popular doctors recommend facial liposuction, and you have to also remember that popular is not necessarily good. There are things that popular doctors do that I, like not externally, but internally just laugh at. I think it's ridiculous that they would do these things because I don't see any potential benefit. I'm very open-minded to things that could be beneficial. It's just some things like liposuction in the face have very few benefits. And yes, a doctor could argue and say, listen, I'm doing it for this specific reason. This patient had an outpouching here that's not supposed to be there. It's irregular and you know, I'm reducing it to a normal size. That makes sense. But otherwise, Kybella and liposuction, when people put it in the face, it's very damaging. And generally, if you went to a doctor who's going to put Kybella in your face and liposuction in your face, they're gonna follow up with some other dumb shit too. So the things that I've seen, and this is very common, surprisingly common, when they do Kybella, you'll see that the doctor, bef because it doesn't work well in the face, they're not, the patient's not gonna get the result they want. So then they go jump in and they do all of a sudden radio frequency while the Kybella is still working. And then they'll go put a steroid shot in. And the steroid shot indents the skin and makes it start becoming discolored. And they go treat that too. So the doctor who do the crazy stuff to begin with will continue to do the crazy stuff and patients end up in this rabbit hole and they end up kind of worsening things in a cycle before they tend to heal. So be very cautious unless, again, a doctor has a very good reason for doing something. Obviously, I'm not talking about those doctors. I'm talking about the general population of plastic surgeons or dermatologists or whoever who erroneously try to liposuction fat out of an unliposuctionable face. The face doesn't have, if you're ever, you know, you're not going to see a great facelift surgeon liposuction the face because they know what fat layers are and they know the quality of that fat and the size of those fat lobules, so they won't do that. 
For the chin under here, Kybella, yeah, it's an option. I just tell people just go for straight liposuction there. It tends to work a lot more effectively and faster with a much lower failure rate. Kybella, you have to do kind of repeatedly, but for somebody who's just scared of doing anything and they wanna do something quick, you can always do Kybella to reduce it. But remember here, you always have to leave some fat also. If you get rid of the fat in the neck, it's all of a sudden gonna be skin stuck onto muscle. And when skin is stuck on a muscle, you just see the muscle rippling and the bands behind it. So if you don't have that cushion, that little layer, of fat left over, it's gonna look aged and you can't fix it with a facelift. You'll do a facelift and it'll get better, but you can't get rid of the bands fully because there's zero cushion on them. The cushion actually camouflages those neck bands that people get. So having some fat in there is a good thing. Just not obviously fat that's gonna be down to here, but that is something that you see a lot with cervical liposuction of the neck. Patients have it done when they really needed a neck lift. It was really muscle drooping and things like that. And then they go get the liposuction done or kybella and all of a sudden now they have a droopy neck with bands. So it's even worse where they end up with an indentation. It's very common. So they get an indent there and two bands over here. So definitely not harmless to do anything in this field. Wand based devices like Thermi RF and FaceTight, they're generally used for the jawline and neck. You don't wanna go sticking those things in the face because you're gonna melt fat where you really, really need it. Cool scalp thing is a cool device. It goes and freezes the fat. You definitely never want to put that on your face. They do have a hand piece that goes for the chin. I've never seen anybody have a successful result with it or anything impressive, but it's not bad. Down here, it's really not bad. It's fine to do. It's just a really subtle change. Buckle fat removal is definitely an okay procedure to do. You just have to be the right person. You don't want to be somebody who has like really narrow teeth and a thin face already or a face like mine and then you go remove buckle fat and then it just kind of collapses, everything falls. Because you have to think about it as though everything above in the face supports whatever's below because we have gravity. So it's hanging off of this, this is hanging off of this, this is hanging off of this, this is hanging off this, this is hanging off this. They're hanging. When you lay down, all of a sudden everything looks beautiful because there's no more gravity there and the shadows are gone. So everything is kind of pulling down all the time and whatever's above it supports it. So if you remove buckle fat, you do have potential for this to collapse. And that's why I say be very conservative or careful with buckle fat removal, especially if somebody has like a narrow mouth. If they have narrow teeth, they're already gonna be collapsing here pretty quickly. If they have wider teeth, they're pushed out more and that's what confuses some people. They think buckle fat removal is gonna help that instead of just getting the teeth narrow or something like that. So the rate of collapse of these things for buckle fat, it's not super high. It's probably from what I've seen out of people that have had buckle fat removed, maybe 30%, which means 70% of the doctors are doing it properly and correctly. The other 30%, either they did it at the wrong time in the person's life prematurely, or they took it on somebody who really didn't need it because they didn't understand the benefits of buckle fat and what it's needed for. I definitely recommend against when doctors tend to try to go reduce the fat of the fold by doing Accutite or little things in there. It's potentially very damaging, so I'd be very cautious about trying to reduce this area. Typically for the nasal labial folds, you can skin tighten diffusely with radio frequency, or you can do a lift, or you can do a dot of filler here and here. Those are the general things for nasal labial folds. Some people are not good candidates for nasal labial fold filling because they start to get broad and they get boxy and they start to masculinize. So that's it, and if you have any topics you want me to cover, let me know.